Hey, welcome back. Today I'm out here for another Q&A session. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you. I have really enjoyed putting these videos together. Season one has been quite the experience, uh, taking a ton of my time and, and I've really enjoyed the creative outlet. I appreciate people sending me emails and text messages, and, you know, contacting me on Twitter and saying how much they appreciate my videos. I appreciate going to different track meets and people coming up and say, hey, I saw your video, I really appreciate it. Well, let me tell you, I really appreciate you and all the support that you've given me. Hopefully season two will, will be beginning here pretty soon. Uh, if you're interested at all in sponsoring season two or just some of the videos uh, during season two, please let me know, uh, shalley at coachhalley.com. I'd love to be able to put a little bit more time and resources into my future videos. All right, so today's question is from Tim. He, he actually posted this question on one of my uh, YouTube videos, and he basically just asked what drills he can do in order to increase arm speed. So before I go over some, some different things that I like to do to increase arm speed, I just want to talk a little bit about, well, what is arm speed? It's not just having, you know, a fast arm. It's a culmination of, of energy. It starts with the lower body, moves all the way up the body, and accelerates through every little phase uh, of that. It's that transfer of energy that accelerates, that goes faster and faster. So today I just want to go over a little bit on what do I do in order to increase the speed of my of my throw. And again, the arm being the last thing, it's the culmination of all these efforts. Okay. So ultimately, we want to release the javelin at the peak of acceleration. So coming off the fingers at the very fastest of all of the movements, right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to start off with the feet. First tip, be fast from your right foot to your left foot. So as I come down from my cross, I'm going to go from my right foot into my left foot, and the, the speed that I go from my right foot to my left foot is the base speed that everything else grows from. So if I'm slow from my right foot to my left foot, then the base speed is slower than if I were faster, right? So I want to make sure that the speed that goes from my right foot to my left foot is fast, okay? Now, the other thing is, as you move up from your, from your feet, moving up through your body, you need your uh, muscles to act like uh, rubber bands, right? So in order for us to get that elastic energy transferred, we need to stretch those rubber bands back, all right? Now, one of the examples that I like to use is, is shooting a rubber band. So I've got this bungee cord here, and the idea of shooting a rubber band, a lot of folks, they just draw the, the band back this way, and then they fire it off, right? And so there's a certain amount of elastic energy here. What I like to do is instead of pulling it back this way, I want to actually push forward. I want to create a stretch by moving farther and farther away from this anchor point. So as I, as I push farther and farther away, then I fire it off. What, what's happening is I'm actually increasing the length of that stretch while creating additional elastic energy because the, the forward momentum of you know, my hand is moving away from the anchor point. So even as I let go from from the band here, my hand is still traveling forward as this band is trying to catch up and then pass it up. So for me, as I'm, as I'm throwing, I'm trying to get my body to move farther and farther away from the anchor point. And in this case, the anchor point is the javelin in your hand. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna come down from that crossover, right foot to left foot being quick, but I also need to get my body in a position where I'm creating that elastic energy. So that means to me is that I'm gonna get my hips back my shoulders back. When I come down from my right foot to my left foot, I'm trying to accelerate and turn the hip. As the hip goes, I can feel I'm creating additional stretch. Now, just like the rubber band analogy, I'm trying to send my hip away from my anchor point. So the hip is creating additional stretch, pulling through here. Now the upper body is going to start taking over, and I'm going to go from this long position here and move into and through the throw. So I'm generating all of this elastic energy, you know, from that landing through my core, through my chest, through my shoulders, and eventually the hand catches up and it passes up, you know, my body to release the throw. So the, the, the speed at which my arm travels has been built all the way up the entire time. Now, in order for you to get fast, right, 
our, uh, our rubber bands, our muscles need to be in a relaxed state. And so as soon as you flex your muscles, as soon as you contract those muscles, you end up losing that elasticity. So through this process, even though I'm sending my hip through here and I'm creating stretch, I'm not engaging the core in a way that makes them inelastic. I'm trying to engage the core by driving and then stretching more. And that's the same thing that once the upper body takes over, I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to contract my muscles this way to produce the throw. I'm actually elongating them and my chest is moving and stretching out. And I can feel it even from here, just trying to keep my arm back as I turn my chest into the throw, I can feel additional energy or a little, uh, elastic energy getting developed here. So again, like the uh, rubber band analogy, I'm trying to get my body to move away from my anchor point. And then finally that transfer of energy results in that fast hand, All right? So number one, understand the concept. Everything grows from the lower body moving up. You need to be in a relaxed state so those uh, rubber bands can be loose, so those, are, those muscles can be loose. And then some of the things that you can do to kind of Kind of work your way into this is start from the lower half start using those hips right allow yourself to move the hips independently of the upper body right i'm trying to get my hips coordinated so i'm feeling there's a little stretch in here every time that i send the hip and then the upper body same thing i'm trying to pinch the shoulder blades back create that elastic energy as my upper body starts to strike moving into the throw and again, I'm trying to stay nice and loose and relaxed because that relaxed muscle is going to be much quicker, be much more uh, quick twitch coming out of it versus me trying to constrict or you know contract those muscles. All right, now, so we've talked a little bit about elastic energy. If you can increase the size of your muscles, increase the size of those rubber bands, there is more opportunity to generate more elastic energy. So one of the ways that you can increase speed is by having more active, larger uh, rubber bands. Now, we're not talking about rubber bands where the uh, uh, the range of, of uh, mobility is really small. We need to increase the size of the rubber bands, but also increase the length of the rubber bands. And I think there can be a point where you get diminishing returns where you're increasing, you know, the, the length too far. I've seen some really flexible people fail to get elastic tension and so you know there is a, a certain point where you get diminishing returns but generally speaking the larger the rubber band the bigger the range of motion the more opportunity there is to create elastic energy okay one last piece is the timing the transfer of energy is, is kind of what you're looking for right you're trying to get all of these little pieces to contribute to an acceleration and in order to make that happen the timing of a throw is really important so one of the things you want to look for is getting rid of slack, right? Getting rid, getting rid of, you know, the areas of your muscles where there's no tension at all. Uh, you want to create tension and then increase that tension all the way through to transfer that energy. The timing of your feet, the hips, the shoulders, one needs to lead into the other each time. It can't be one skipping the other and then catching up later on. You've got to make sure that Kind of like a whip or, um, you know, if, if you uh, fish, uh, you can see a fishing pole. There's that elastic energy in there. As, the, as that pole moves through, you can see it increases in speed to finish uh, casting. If you watch pole vaulters, it's kind of that same way. You're generating a lot of uh, energy here, and then it accelerates and pushes the, um, the pole vaulter up. So the idea is the timing is really important. Remove any of those little slack points. Make sure that each little piece leads into the other so there's a nice clean transfer of energy that's accelerating through its entire path. All right, so one of the things that I like to do to increase the, you know, the arm speed is, is just restricting my right arm. Um, I've got a, a bungee. I'm just attaching it to something that's stationary. And all I'm trying to do is trying to get engage the other parts of my body and leave the hand back. I'm trying to create that elastic energy. So it starts from the lower body again, from the hips, working way up my upper body and then through the chest. And I'm just trying to leave my hand back as I, as I move through. All right. 
So I'm trying to get the hip going through the core into the shoulder without pulling the band closer to me because I'm trying to, again, create that elastic energy before I even begin pulling on, on the javelin. So again, hips up to the shoulders and then my upper body is going to roll over my block. But the entire time I'm trying to keep the hand back. So I'm generating stretching through my body here without pulling the javelin closer to me. Okay, another resistance band drill that I like to do to increase arm speed. And again, I'm just trying to create elastic energy and stay relaxed. So one of the things that folks have trouble with is they try and they try and muscle it, right? They're uh, contracting their upper body in order to throw. And so what I want to do is I want to create the reverse, right? So I'm going to resist this rubber band. This is going to act as the, the muscles here. It's going to try and pull my hand closer. So the idea is here, I'm using the muscles in my back to keep my hand away and keep this band extended. And I need to do this while I'm relaxed through this top half here. So as I turn my hips, turn my uh, chest, I'm going to try and resist the hand here. And then as I relax to finish my throw, my arm accelerates. Okay, so I pull through here, hips to shoulders, and then I accelerate. And really, I'm just trying to stay relaxed up here. I can feel additional stretch, but the timing again is really important because as I stretch here, I don't want to strike here too early. I want to turn my shoulders completely through. And then as I relax, that arm comes accelerating through. Okay, uh, so the last uh, suggestion that I have to increase arm speed is to, to use overweight implements. I've got a thousand gram javelin that I use to warm up. And again, I'm trying to throw from my lower half and build to my upper half. And the acceleration of my arm is basically that culmination, right, of energy from my lower half to the upper half indoor it's actually nice because then i get to use the heavier javelin balls i've got one that's a one and a half k i've got a 1k an 800 gram and it goes all the way down to a 400 gram and the heavier the object the more time it takes to accelerate it so you can become much more efficient at the movement so you start off with a heavier ball maybe like a one and a half k or a 1k ball and then you taper it down and get down to something like a 400 gram ball and just by becoming more efficient with the heavier ball, you then maintain that efficiency with a lighter one and your muscles are going to be able to then strike and move through a lot quicker. So overweighted training, I think, is a, is a good thing. Now, you have to be careful because you're not going to you know, overtrain because that'll start you know, giving you diminishing returns. But start with something that's a little bit heavier and then move into a lighter implement and that will help, again, accelerate the throwing process. All right, I'm going to wrap that up. Again, Tim, thanks for uh, posting the comment. Uh, this, I think, is a topic that I could probably do a couple more segments on, so maybe we'll see later on if I can add maybe a little bit more. But if you have questions or comments about this, please put them in the comments below, and you know maybe I'll add them to the next version of this video. So, all right, I guess I'll leave it there. Uh, until I see you next time, have fun and throw far.